Every morning I wake up on a sailboat in Buki Harbor. This morning when I woke up, there were 40 to 50 tarpon rolling. Whatever I do seems to come back to fish, fishing, the ocean. That's the kind of experience that I, I love. My name is Dr. Ross Busek. I'm a scientist with Bonefish and Tarpon Trust. Who's Ross? Ross? Mad fish scientist, Ross? He's a great example of a scientist that does everything based on stakeholder input. He's at every single guide meeting, uh, both in the upper and the lower keys. So he's really translating what's going on in the keys to the science that Bonefish and Tarpon Trust is trying to do in the keys. He's got, you know, hardened hands from sailing. You know, he's still got the sunscreen, still got the salt on his face. And he can say these data points like off the top of his head without even thinking about it. And when you get a guy like that, who's on the water every day, lives on the water, and has command of the facts in front of the folks that are gonna make decisions, that's the recipe for success. Part of my job really is, it's both science and it's advocacy. I get to be involved in the process to see science make change. I've been guiding in the Keys for 22 years, and I think when I first started, it was, you know, it was wild. There was fish all over the place, and over the years, I've seen that change. The thing that scares me the most is not necessarily what I'm seeing change out there, it's what I'm not seeing happen to respond to it. Alarming, scientists say it could change the behavior of fish and even destroy entire species but I just think it's this, almost like this headwind that you get up in the morning and you go out and you just know that, you know, year after year, the consistent thing is that it's not as good as the year before. And that bothers me. If we were to lose our fisheries in the Florida Keys, we lose our economy. If we lose our tarpon fishery, it's not coming back in my lifetime. It's not coming back in my kid's lifetime. That's scary, man. A beautiful part of my job is I get to fish for science. Sometimes the only way you can catch them is fly fishing. You can hear it has like a distinct ping noise. I can't describe it any other way but a, like a ping. And you hear seven or eight of them and that's the, the code sequence of the tags transmitting to the receiver box. You're about to get one right now. See, look, 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 look. Yeah, 523. Did we tag him? I don't have to look. That's definitely a bone. I can't catch fish and I can't tag them and I can't study them, and then we can't make change with the data. So bonefish, they live in very shallow water sometimes. The fly lands quietly. The artistic nature of tying flies can match that whatever they're eating on that specific flat perfectly. So all that diversity in the range and the, the stealthiness of fly fishing provides us these opportunities to catch these very tricky and hard to catch fish in really cool places. In this current bonefish study, we've tagged close to 100 bonefish. And about 30 of them we've caught on fly out of necessity. Being able to tag an eight pounder like we caught, being able to catch it on fly is just exceptional. And after that, for the next five years, that fish will tell us what it likes, what it doesn't like, what habitats it uses, where it spawns. And from that, we can learn so much about the environment that we can use to inform conservation measures down the road. Well, that's the kind of data, those are the fish we want to bring back to our fishery. We need to study them, learn from them. So that's science driving conservation, driving an improved fishery down the road. The Florida Keys is the fishing capital of the world. We have such a diverse fishery. If we can't get the regulations, the restorations, fixing our waters in place, it's gone. BTT plays one of the most important roles because it does the science. It provides the data, the facts, to support the argument to make the change. 
I think without organizations like Bonefish and Tarpon Trust, guides would just be continuously watching a fishery decline. In Florida, we have a lot of things working against our, our fisheries and our resources, but there's optimism in a lot of ways. We have a resurgence in our bone fishery. We have a Florida resident population that's sick and tired of the abuses that our resources have had, and now they're fighting. They're fighting hard, and they're willing to do whatever it takes to make it improve. It just makes my job more satisfying to see the science get put to good use and provides me the obligation to do the best science knowing that they're sticking their necks out for it. They're trusting me to provide them the recommendations, the information needed to move forward.